on the Vintage Vibe. And we're taking a peek at the mini monitor and we're doing a repair on a budget. Here we are at the workbench at the Vintage Vibe or the operating table and you can see that there is a speaker missing from the speaker. <laughs> that is a Paradigm mini monitor, a version 2 and the tweeters have been removed. Uh, now these look very similar to the earlier Paradigm speakers like the um, 3SE Mark IIs, so on and so forth. And um, the actual tweeter that they use, although it's a well-built tweeter, you can see just how big the magnet is. Let's compare that to, for example, this tweeter here from a Optimus uh, 7, which is a large kind of floor standing speaker from Realistic. It resembles the Sansui 3005 or some of the early JBLs. Um, that's a little alnico magnet on that one, whereas this is kind of a large, um, you know, ceramic magnet, which you find in most modern speakers. Now, they're notorious for problems with the speakers, in particular the tweeters. And the uh, individual who owned these, who traded them in, partial trade again, um, told me that they were kind of dull and lifeless. He had them in storage for a while, took them out, wanted to get back into hi-fi and um, didn't sound right and that's why he wanted to buy mine. So I was hoping that it might be something simple. For example, um, these little leads here that maybe something had come undone, one of the solder points, or maybe a wire in the speaker had come loose or a solder point, but no, both happened to be blown. And um, what actually happens to these speakers if you have a pair and your tweeter stopped working is, this is your diaphragm. It's a one inch aluminum you know, kind of dome. And on the back side of it, as you can kind of see here, this is the actual voice coil. This uh, kind of piece of copper wire that's kind of dangling there. And they are prone, just like in this here, to separate from the actual diaphragm. It's a adhesive on them that they're notorious for kind of falling apart and then the tweeter dies. Now, why didn't I just go buy a pair of replacement ones off of eBay? Well, the replacement tweeter, if you've ever looked for replacement parts before, um, is more expensive than the speakers are worth. Now, why not just get a diaphragm? They sell the diaphragms online for $20 for a pair. They just kind of look as such. But then you need to buy what's called ferrofluid which actually goes into the gap down here where the voice coil is. You drop it in there, and a small bottle of it, which is just good enough for two tweeters, will cost you probably 45 US. So even after the diaphragms for 20, the ferrofluid for 45, and the shipping, it's more than what the speakers are worth. And here is going to be the solution in this case, which is cost effective, and I'm hoping is gonna sound good in these speakers. Um, this is actually a piezo styled tweeter from a pair of uh, Boston Acoustics. And these have never been installed before. Uh, again, I got them from one of my tech friends and they're smaller in diameter as you can kind of tell. This is the original driver uh, with its own little baffle than what the actual paradigm unit would have been. But I was able to kind of match these together nicely and retain a factory type look. Um, well, if the paradigm ever had a Paisel tweeter in it, that is. <laughs> Let's take a quick peek at what I did here. So there again is a close up of the Boston Acoustics tweeter. Now I'm sure this is made for Boston Acoustics because I've seen other tweeters like this that are identical minus this additional magnet, which um, is actually kind of a plus because it gives a little bit more strength to the motor uh, of the speaker. So this would be, a, I guess, maybe the manufacturer added this for po uh, Boston Acoustics, their specs of their drivers. Now, talking about specs, uh, I am not by any means saying that the specs of these are, in fact, identical to these not uh, by any stretch of the imagination, I'm sure. However, uh, knowing the purpose of these is probably some background music in a garage, in a basement, um, whatever it may be, they're not really intended to be critical listening speakers, and I hope they're going to sound good enough. 
essentially I, I pick these ones because the physical kind of dimensions and the fact that I believe that I could get this mounting dead center on this as you can see and even line up because of my measurements these three mounting holes which would have originally held the paradigm tweeter in place uh, now although the plastic bonder will probably prevent them from ever separating um, I'm gonna go ahead and use instead of the factory screw which is now not big enough because remember uh, we didn't have this kind of extra layer of plastic here it would have been a tweeter mounted directly on top of this I've gone ahead and got larger screws and painted the heads of them black so that we can go ahead pop that in like that and put a washer on the back as well as a nut and you know give it that factory type appearance um, so the glue itself or the resin as mentioned just kind of went along the bead if I kind of flip this up you'll just see right in this area maybe a tiny bit of glue it's very hard to see it and that's a good thing that means I did my job well <laughs> I want these to look as neat and tidy for the next owner as possible um, but I really think this was a uh, kind of a smart retrofit uh, just in terms of cost and functionality now we're gonna go ahead and um, bolt this in place figure out what wires what on the speaker cabinets again for positive and negative and mount it up and then move on to the next speaker and I'll show you kind of the step-by-step -step, uh, with that second speaker. okay so that is kind of the finished mounting as you can see there a washer a little nut and uh, that should really secure that nicely before we place that in the speaker okay the uh, connector for the positive lead is the wrong size so I've gone ahead and clipped it off and uh, we're going to slide over uh, a larger connector here just want to make sure that this one has not been uh, already used <laughs> sometimes I kind of throw old ones back in with new ones and uh, we're going to go ahead and just quickly crimp this okay so that should give us a good strong bond and now this should have absolutely no problem sliding over top as such. Now, the gap between the connector and the uh, magnet is so tight, so close, uh, that I'm going to go ahead and put a small piece of heat shrink. Um, interestingly enough, between them and now that's what that uh, will look like just to kind of fill in the gap I just didn't like how close this uh, positive lead was to the magnet that should uh, make it a lot safer that we don't have any sort of chance of shorting anything out and just because I have bad luck we're gonna go ahead and we'll put a heat shrink wrap on the other lead as well too And that will really foolproof it that we have no risk of either lead grounding out and essentially shorting out a very expensive amplifier in the process. There we go. Now we're just going to go ahead and bolt that back in place and give it a test. Always double check your work. <laughs> I uh, just realized that I forgot to put our little gasket in place here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then tighten these back up and we're gonna give them a, a quick listen. Stay tuned because we've got Alex Pangman next with Swing Set and after that we've got Danny Marks with Blues FM. It's your perfect Saturday night lineup. Well there you go. And right now I'm we'll be listening to, to a little bit of blues here. later on tonight then with these speakers as we know this one is now A-OK. -okay. We were just listening actually to a Great record here, in case you're wondering, you're looking for something to give your turntable a workout. This is Solar Energy by the Ray Brown Trio. In fact, it has a warning read on it saying, caution, dynamic recording uh, of bass may cause difficulties at low tracking forces. So, you want to give your speakers a workout and your turntable. That's the record. So back to 
the Paradigm Mini Monitor. So in my opinion, this is a just a new and improved version of the Mark III speakers that Paradigm made back in the 80s, kind of early 90s. And they were a real value giant, I think. A, a great performing speaker for you know what you paid for them. Uh, they were not expensive. And um, the mini monitors, because they went through a whole bunch of different changes over the years, subtle, but changes. The biggest change would have been getting rid of the VIFA soft dome tweeter and putting in that uh, titanium dome tweeter with the waveguide on the front of it. And um, some people like titanium tweeters, some people don't. Um, I've heard some good speakers with them and some speakers where they, you know, can get a little tinny sounding. Um, these particular speakers, I've listened to them working in the past and I'm pretty familiar with how they sound and I think they have a decent mid-range, particularly the uh, lower mid-range. I think they've got, you know, decent high frequency uh, extension and they image pretty good for a you know, relatively cheap speaker. Um, they struggle, I think, a little bit in the bottom end. Not that they don't have bottom end, they've got plenty of it, but they can get a little boxy sounding and a little bit boomy. So, um, in particular, if you have a pair of mini monitors or if you pick up a pair, great for the office. If you're going to have it in a larger room, you might want to consider actually a subwoofer and maybe cross it over so that you have 80 and under going to the sub take a little bit of load off the um, that mid bass driver and it might actually help make them sound even better. Now these ones with the modifications, you know, the repairs, actually, I kind of like them. <laughs> Dare I say they actually sounded maybe better than, you know, the originals for a, you know, smaller, um, less substantial tweeter. And maybe it's that I'm just not a huge fan of titanium dome tweeters. But um, I thought they turned out decent. So what do you pay for a pair of mini monitors working? Probably 50 to 100 bucks, um, 20, 23 Canadian dollars. If I was picking up a pair, I would probably pay no more than about 70, 75 dollars. Because I think there's just so many other options out there. And keep in mind, these are notorious for tweeter problems. So if they uh, are working, Right now, there's a good chance, maybe not for long, that uh, voice coil just separates from the diaphragm. It's a known problem. You can fix them the right way uh, by getting a new diaphragm and the ferrofluid. If you really love them and you're willing to put um, back into them what they're probably worth used, or you could take a less expensive route, which I did, and probably get a pretty comparable um, kind of end result. So there you have it. A little less of a review and a little more of a how to repair something this time on the Vibe, but I hope you enjoyed it regardless, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe.